Yo, what's up? This is The Trades, coming to you live from San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Shadow Rockin' Pro 41 of the Floor Gangs and the Knuckle Neck Tribe. And before we get started, I want to introduce my guest for today, all the way from China. We got my man, Rob Nasty. I'm not from China. <laughs> You're so vain, you probably think this post is about you. So today's episode of The Trades is about style preference. Me and my boy Ark came up with uh, the definition. So style preference is an opinion formed by an individual's history, knowledge, and regional influence. Used to analyze a subject's movement. Where you're from and what time you came up in is what your tastes are based upon. So we're going to start out with our style preference starting in the early 90s in uh, Northern California. What what would you say we were in- influenced by? We called it housing. Um, and this was a little bit before the Chicago house dance movement or the house, house, yeah, house music, music movement. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff that what was happening in the Bay in the early 90s was uh, before what I call the return of the B-boy movement happened. Yeah, I think uh, Hammer had a lot to do with influence and dancing on the West Coast. And even the Elite Force, they wanted to put the boogie and the breaking together with hip-hop dance, the social aspects of hip-hop dance that they kind of laid the foundation. So I think regionally in Northern California, we still value tops. We value the the presentation and the dance. Which brings us to Philly, another region that has a certain style preference, that real dancey-dancey aspect. And I think because they had an like event called The Gathering that happened once a month, they would have a DJ play like house music. And everyone, all the poppers, all the lockers, all the b-boys would start dancing to house music. Or if they played a funk song, maybe the house dancers or hip-hop dancers would start locking or breaking. They went with the vibe of the music. If you go to Philly, dancing on top is really valued too. So, for instance, in Florida, it was a little bit different because in the early 90s, what was being pushed was when Rocksteady was on Jam on the Groove going through their tour, they're pushing the true school movement. The four elements of hip hop, you know, breaking, DJing, played a part was the graffiti. The graffiti and that true school aspect. Like in the late 90s and 2000s, was influenced in, in, in Florida, was influenced by Incredible Breaking. Yeah, word. I agree. So, a lot of the top rock. A lot of the stuff is similar to Lowe, Brian, Chino, yeah. Sammy, what they were doing as far as their top style. They had the raw battle. Yeah. That's what they focused on. Yeah. Versus like, I could outdance this guy. Right. Like, I could I really outfunk this guy. I could really right. groove more than this right. guy. Also in Miami, what they had going on in the late 90s was a B-Boy Pro-Am. Right. With, uh, big up to B-Boy pro yeah. Europe is a totally different approach. They were influenced by like uh, the Wild Style Tour in 82. And then even changed after IBE uh, 98, changed more into like what the blow up type stuff. And two separate eras, like if you get a judge uh, from the 80s and a judge from the late 90s from France, it's going to judge totally different. So uh, style preference plays a part in judging because they're coming from a different perspective. Like some of the younger guys are just coming from, from the YouTube era, the VHS era. I'm coming from before competition yeah thing about judging you never know because of someone's style preference but everything else might be subjective you know what i mean besides execution now we're going to go to the questions uh we have london reyes of the new york city breakers NYCBB. he asks who are some of the guys that you feel are representing the true art form of hip-hop and he means you know as far as dancers uh, a guy who's really killing it right now who, who represents hip hop? I would say is B Boy Remind. Yeah, he influenced kind of like the mixture of the top rock freestyle we were talking about. Right, he was a game changer. Yeah, he changed the game. He knows how to dance. And he knows how to break. So his whole presentation. Right, yeah. who has a hip hop consciousness? The yes, hip-hop consciousness. And I would have to say, uh, BGSK is one of the yeah, best that's... crews as far as doing hip hop. That's what I was gonna say like, too. Like not just being dancers. Drop Jewels, you know, he rhymes. A lot of them do graffiti or at least touch graffiti. Producing, actually making beats, DJing. They're bringing that consciousness. They'll still be in the ciphers. They'll still be in the competitions. They have the feeling of hip-hop. Yeah, exactly. You know, Where I mean? a lot of crews may not have that feeling of right. hip-hop. They have certain b-boys that are winning competitions, but they're wearing makeup. They're right. wearing makeup looking like pretty boys. And yeah. Is it hip-hop? No, it's K-pop, Yeah, it's not hip-hop. Right. Sorry, guys. It's not <laughs> hip-hop. 
Boom! Right. So we're about to wrap up the show. Before we go, I you want it. <laughs> Rob, where can they find you on your social media platforms? Uh, just Google Rob Nasty Rocker, one word, and that will link you to my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. The way you can contact so me <laughs> is <laughs> facebook.com slash P-R-O-F-O-W-O-N capital F L G Z on Instagram and on Twitter. Hashtag us at the trades B boy. I'm your host, Profile One. My guest, Rob Nasty. We're out. Peace. Peace. You're not hip hop. <laughs>